So what's going on YouTube? It's Sunday evening and I know you need a good recipe for this week. This is an Indian style dal curry. Now the beauty with this curry is that it's so versatile in ingredients. It's vegetarian and it's vegan friendly. So it being vegetable and plant based, use whatever you have in the house. Every time I make this, the ingredients are different. So I just use whatever I have close to hand. So I go through the ingredients I'm going to use, so let's get cooking. Let's just run through the vegetables I'm using first. I'm going to use some carrots and I have a red bell pepper, some leftover cauliflower I have. So the bulk of this will be made up of uh, split peas. So I'm using yellow split peas and red split lentils. These are an extremely good source of fiber and they kind of bulk up the dish and add a meatiness to it. The sauce is made from coconut milk. So I'm using a half tin of light coconut milk and a full tin of peeled plum tomatoes canned. And we're gonna saute off a full onion, a bowl of garlic, or a clove of garlic, sorry, and just a thumb sized piece of ginger. So these are gonna give the base flavoring of the dish. So we saute them off first. We add in our seasonings that I'll go through in a minute. And then we add our sauce and our lentils. So I go through this recipe step by step, nice and slowly, so it's easy to follow. And you'll see how really simple this is to make. ginger and garlic chopped up you saw I left on the skin of the ginger that ginger is fresh ginger so like really all the the positive antioxidants and the nutrients they're gonna be found in the skin and the fiber so make sure it's washed well and you can leave it on there's nothing wrong with it so they're all really finely chopped and minced up so they're gonna be the first things that go into our pan but right now we'll get all the rest of the things chopped up and ready to rock So that's all our vegetables chopped up. You'll notice I, I didn't chop these as finely as I chopped the onions and garlic and ginger. Leave these pretty thick and they really kind of give that meat resemblance in the dish. So you won't even know there's no meat in this. This is all vegetables and really you can tell a good curry by the range of colors you're going to use. So you can see there's a really, really, really good range of colors. So now we're gonna go in with the seasonings and these are the most crucial part of the curry. For this we're using a tablespoon of mild curry powder. A teaspoon of cumin. A teaspoon of cayenne pepper. teaspoon of chili flakes and we'll also do a really good pinch of salt and pepper when it's in the pan and to accompany this you can use a whole grain rice uh, I like to use a couscous or even if you have nice pita breads because it's quite a chunky and hearty meal you don't really need the addition of a rice but I'm actually all out of couscous I used it up yesterday so I will be using Uncle Brent's whole grain rice. Uh, not a lot will be needed, so but we're ready to rock I'll do here. it anyway. So, gas on. Just gonna use um, a teaspoon of coconut oil just for the sauteing of the onions and garlic. You don't need a lot, just a bare, a bare teaspoon will do. Put that into the pan and let that melt. So once that oil is really hot, then we're gonna go in with our first three ingredients, the onion, the garlic, and the ginger. So in they go. You should hear it sizzle straight away. Yeah. So once the onion and garlic, yeah. So once the onion, garlic, and ginger is starting to brown up, you can see it's starting to crisp up. Go in with your seasonings now next. So putting the seasonings onto a hot pan is, is going to wake them up, especially if they're coming from a, a tub or a container. 
just put them onto the hot pan before anything else goes in and it's going to wake them up and really give them a real burst of flavour. So I'll see things go in next. So you can see our onion, garlic and ginger is coated with the seasonings now. So that's like the perfect base for any Indian or curry style dish. Always get them in there first. Wake up your flavorings, wake up your ingredients and then go in whatever rest you have. So that's all perfect. They're all pretty browned off and ready to go. So now we're in with our bulk ingredients, which is our vegetables. So our carrot, bell pepper and cauliflower. So they all go into the hot pan. sauce is made. So I'm using a light coconut milk. You can use a full fat one, it just will be increasing the fat content. But um, So for a half can of coconut milk, I'm using one full tin of chopped tomatoes. So this is this is the base of any curry. So we have our coconut milk in, tomatoes, and after this, I'm also going to be going on with Three tablespoons of soy sauce, you can use a light soy sauce if you have to, or a tamari, which is a, a vegan. Oh sorry, this actually, if you use soy sauce, that will take this uh, away from being a vegan recipe. So if you are a vegan, use a tamari, that's a, a wheat-free soy sauce, and that'll keep this vegan. But if not, soy sauce will do, and then half a lemon, so the juice of half a lemon. So get that in there as well. So because there's a lot going on here, we really do need a good pinch of salt and a good pinch of pepper just to balance it all off. You can't really put a measurement on this, it's kind of just season to taste. So make sure you're seasoning it all well and you're constantly tasting it throughout cooking. So a nice bit of salt and pepper and I probably will add more later on when I taste it. Um, you'll know yourself when you taste it. If it needs a bit more salt, don't be afraid to add it in. There's nothing wrong with that. And the last thing we're putting into this pot is our lentils. So I'm going in with the rest of this bag of the yellow split lentils. I would say there's about 60 grams here. So they're going in and I'll do probably the equivalent of the red lentils. So the same. So they're really going to volumize this. They'll kind of puff up and take in all the beautiful juices that we're just after making here. So you'll see now it's a pretty wet. So you can see it's a pretty wet and liquidy um, curry right now. So the main thing is to put a lid on this and leave it simmer for at least 30 to 40 minutes. So next time you see this, this will be a really thick, uh, hearty meal. So it's nice to have like a yogurt dressing on top. So we're going to do that really quickly here. And this is simple, like there's no technique to this whatsoever. So all we're doing here is just really finely sliced cucumber I just did. So we'll just put that into a bowl. I have some, as always, just the Liberté Greek yogurt. Uh, this is non-fat, it doesn't have to be. So aim that in with our cucumber. So again, like this, all this is, is just a purpose, just to kind of cool down the dish and really just counteract the really spiciness of the dish. Or two sprigs of mint as well. This is like a really cool, refreshing um, herb to use and it goes really well with a yogurt and cucumber. So again, just really finely, finely slice that up and add it in with your yogurt. So that's it, just bang it in. There's nothing neat or special about this. Mix it around. A little spritz of lemon juice, just to give it a bit of a citrus. And that's it. That's it. So this has been cooking for the last 20 minutes and you can see now, I'm really good and thick and um, there's no actual liquid left. So that's just ready to go. As soon as your vegetables have a bit of a bite to them, that's ready to rock. Um, our rice is cooked and ready to go. So now it's just to plate it all up. So this recipe serves two people, so that's just one portion done up. That's half the bag of rice and half the pan of food. So really there's a huge portion here as well. So onto this. I'm just gonna get you down there. So onto this, our curry is here. So we're gonna go on with a good tablespoon of our Greek yogurt and cucumber. So that's just gonna balance out the flavors. And a little bit of the coriander that I chopped a while ago, just to garnish it over and make it look nice. But really, that's it. And that is how simple that can be. That is my 
Thai red dal curry. And so that's the whole dish done, easy, bang. I promise you, you will never go back to a store bought jar of sauce again once you see how easy it is to make this. The calories for this per portion are 315 calories with uh, 14 grams of protein. And that's very good considering we have no meat source here. So a really good source of protein is those lentils and there's a huge amount of fiber in this. So we have um, just under 40 grams of carbs. And again, I wouldn't even recommend using a rice with this. I would use a pita bread made with some garlic butter or um, really nice toasted bread. That's we have 10 grams of fat. So again, our fats are coming from the coconut milk, which is a good source of fat. So don't be afraid of that. Usually an Indian or a Thai style curry are gonna be much higher in fats anyway. That's it, under 300 calories, two portions and the price proportion is literally nothing like them. So the most expensive thing you're going to buy is probably the tin of canned tomatoes and coconut milk, which are, I think, 98 cents in Tesco or Super Value. But really, from a money-saving point of view, this is the way to go. It, and it tastes, honestly, it tastes much better than any sort of bought curry you're gonna get. So please give it a go. So as always, thank you for watching. Keep on cooking, and I'll see you next Sunday.